In this video, we'll talk about how inheritance works in Java. Creating a hierarchy of classes allows us to define common attributes and methods in a single place rather than repeating them. As an example, we'll look at creating classes for four simple shapes, rectangle, triangle, circle, and ellipse. First, we'll identify attributes and methods for each of these classes. Rectangles will be defined with the X and Y of the upper left corner and width and height and have a color and number of sides. Triangles are defined by specifying three points and have a color and number of sides. Circles have a center X and Y and a radius as well as a color. Ellipses will have a center, two radii, and a color. Now we start looking for things that are shared in common. Each of our classes has a color, methods for getting and setting the color, and a method for computing the area. We'll want to put all of these in a parent class. When thinking about parent classes, you want to think of is a. All of these are shapes. A rectangle is a shape, a triangle is a shape, a circle is a shape, and an ellipse is a shape. So we'll make a class shape and put the common things there. Repeating this, we see that rectangles and triangles have a number of sides. A rectangle is a polygon, and so is a triangle. So we'll create a class polygon to hold this common attribute and method. Looking again, we'll see that both circles and ellipses have a center. While you might be tempted to think that since an ellipse has everything a circle does plus a second radius, ellipse should be a child class of circle, this violates the is a principle. Actually, a circle is an ellipse, so we'll make the circle be a child class of ellipse instead. Putting all this together, we get the following picture, which is a UML, Uniform Modeling Language, diagram. This particular UML diagram was created with a tool called Raptor. NetBeans users can download a UML plugin from the Tools menu. This diagram shows the hierarchy of classes, with shape at the top. This UML diagram contains a lot more information than we've discussed. For example, plus means public and minus means private. It also includes the constructor methods and specifications for all the methods. Let's start looking at the code. First, we'll start at the top with the class shape. We make this class abstract because we're never going to have an object that's just a shape. It will be a rectangle, triangle, circle, or ellipse. The class shape exists only to hold common attributes and methods. We also will make the method getArea abstract. This forces every non-abstract, or concrete, child class to implement a getArea method. We can't put the body of the method here because the area of each shape is computed differently. Having the abstract method here, though, guarantees all shapes will have a way to compute the area. Looking at the rest of the class, we see the definition of the attribute color, a simple constructor, and methods for getting and setting the color. Moving down to the polygon class, you'll see that it is also abstract. The keyword extends is used to indicate that every polygon is a shape, and that polygons inherit all of the methods and attributes of the class shape. We add an additional attribute for the number of sides, and the constructor begins by calling a constructor from the superclass. Calling a superclass constructor is mandatory, and must come first in the constructor method. If you omit this, the Java compiler will add a call to the zero-parameter constructor in the superclass automatically, and generate an error if one doesn't exist. After the call to super, we set the number sides attribute. Finally, we have the method to get the number of sides. Polygon is not required to implement getArea, although it would be permitted to do so because it is an abstract class. Moving down to rectangle, we have our first non-abstract class, marked as being a child class of polygon. Again, we add additional attributes and have a constructor which calls a constructor from polygon and then sets the rest of the attributes. We also define getArea, which is required. The compiler would report an error if we failed to implement the abstract method in a non-abstract class. The class triangle is very similar and is also a child of polygon. The only differences are the attributes and a different implementation of the getArea method. Moving to the class ellipse, it also extends shape and inherits the attributes and methods for color. We add the additional attributes and provide a constructor as with the previous classes. Also, we provide an implementation of the getArea method, 
which is again required since this class is not abstract. Next we consider the class circle. Circle is a child class of ellipse, so it inherits all of its attributes and methods. Basically, a circle is an ellipse where both of the radii are the same. You can see this in the constructor. You might think that a getArea method is missing. After all, circle is a non-abstract class and a descendant of shape, so it should be required to implement getArea. And it is, but it inherits a getArea method from ellipse, which suffices. Finally, we'll look at a short main program. This creates an array of four shapes. Note that a variable of type shape can refer to any kind of shape. After calling the constructors, it simply loops through and prints out the area of each shape. When it is run, we see the area of the four shapes. Obviously, lots more could be added to these classes. You can download them from java.martincarlisle.com and experiment.